On this week of Ask Dan Windows, we're going to talk about the Surface Phone. Where's Windows 10 Mobile and is Windows Phone actually dead? Stay tuned. Do you agree that Windows Phone is over? And do you still use Windows Phone every day? Okay, so this is a bit of a tough question to answer, especially in one segment. Long story short, yeah, Windows Phone kind of died, honestly, once Microsoft canceled McLaren back in 2014. I think once they did that, they basically said there's not going to be an upgrade path for Lumia 920 owners and basically people on a two-year contract. And that's what happened. We went through a long phase with no flagship. And now we have the Lumia 950, 950XL, but no one really believes those are going to be the devices that are going to save Windows 10 Mobile. So once you have that large gap, yeah, it's really hard to make up for it. Now, but this is a longer question here, is like Windows 10 Mobile really done? No, um, Microsoft's going to continue pushing on with this. But as I've argued in the past, that it's not necessarily about the phone. It's going to be more about mobile computing, where we take these things with us. We really want a computer in our pocket. And I really think Microsoft's going to pursue that vision. Now, we still have a little while to go. There's this rumors of a Surface phone coming out in the fall. But the idea here is, is the smartphone that you have in your pocket right now going to be the same type of device that we'll be using in five or 10 years? That is, what we know as a smartphone today Today, is that what the future holds? I think things are going to shift around as processing power basically increases. So the idea here is continuum, something like that. And so I think Microsoft's going to be playing around with this. They have the universal Windows platform to work with as far as apps. There's still definitely more coming here. But yeah, it's going to be sort of a paradigm shift. At least that's what they're betting on. Whether or not it actually works, I don't know. But basically what we know as Windows Phone right now is kind of dead and it's for the fans. That's not a bad thing though. If you enjoy using Microsoft's products, you know, the Windows 10 mobile experience can be an interesting thing, especially in 2016 as they basically refine the operating system and roll out new features. So yeah, I think Windows Phone is kind of on the ropes here. I can say though, there are some big apps still coming, few in the next month. So the Windows 10 mobile story is not over. To the other question, do I still use it? Sure, I use a 950 XL right now, mostly because it has the firmware update. I'm still waiting for AT&T to roll it out for the 950, but I actually generally like the 950 XL experience. I'm not saying it's the best one out there. I also do have multiple lines, so I have an iPhone on another line. I do play around with my Sims and trying out new devices. But yeah, I still use Windows Phone every day. It would be hard for me to write on this stuff if I wasn't familiar with it. Should I get the Lumia 930, which is more affordable but outdated, or wait for the Lumia 950, which is more expensive but a high-end phone? So one of the questions we get often is about which phone a person should buy. 930 is still a really great device. I really have no problems recommending it to people, especially if you're on a budget. You don't want to spend that premium price for a 950 or 950 XL. Sure, you're going to miss some things like that new high-end camera, but let's be honest, 930's camera is pretty solid as it is, and it's a great feeling device, and some would say it's a much higher quality design, and I kind of agree with that. So sure, go get a 930, and let's wait to the fall to see what else comes out. Why isn't it possible to buy a game once and have it available to download on both PC and Xbox? All right, so that's a really good question. This speaks to basically Microsoft's vision of where gaming is going. You can't do that right now, but I really do think that will happen probably even this year. In fact, later in February, we'll be flying out to San Francisco where Microsoft is going to be holding a special press event focusing on Xbox and Windows 10, and the rumor has it that they may be announcing something like that. I said before that in 2016, in the first half of it, they will be announcing the Xbox One store. So developers can basically make Windows 10 apps and put it on the store to use on your Xbox. I think that'll be part of the story. Now, when it comes to gaming, that is their vision, that they have games basically everywhere. And you saw that today with the release of Tomb Raider. So now you can get Tomb Raider on the PC. The question is, you can't buy it on Xbox, though, and have that same game on your PC. They're two separate purchases. I think that's just left over from the legacy stuff though that we we're dealing with before. The vision though is to have those stores connected. Pretty soon you should be able to buy a game and have it on both systems. But there's going to be a lot of things here that Microsoft has to overcome, including performance differences and hardware differences. We're already seeing that with the Tomb Raider game. There's also some licensing issues. They can't just take games and put them on any device and not have to pay for that or negotiate that somehow with the publisher. So that all needs to be taken care of. But that is their vision, that you're going to have gaming across Xbox, PC, and even your phone someday. Of course, there'll be hardware restrictions there, but that is coming and stay tuned for February. We'll see what happens with Microsoft.
Why is Microsoft pushing back the rollout date for Windows 10 Mobile and losing momentum from the 950-950 XL release? So delays, delays, delays. It's something that people who are fans of Windows and Microsoft have been facing a lot lately. Obviously, Windows 10 Mobile was rumored to be out at the end of 2015, and here we are in 2016 with no sign of it coming. It is coming soon, but you guys are all familiar with that expression. So why is that? Now, Microsoft hasn't given a specific reason for it, but I think it's pretty obvious, which is the reviews for Windows 10 Mobile have not been that good. There's been a lot of complaints about performance and battery problems, and I really think Microsoft said, whoa, all right, we can't put this out there now. Let's step back here. Let's fix these issues and get them out to users so it's a really good experience. So you have to basically choose. Do you want Windows 10 Mobile in a less than perfect form, which 950, 950 XL users have right now, or do you want to wait for it until it's better? Neither one of those are ideal, especially when you have iPhone out there and Android competing. But those are the two choices Microsoft is dealing with, and so they have to pick one. And so it looks like they're basically fixing Windows 10 Mobile, getting it a little bit more polished before a more general release. I can't fault them for it, but if you're a Microsoft fan, neither option is going to be good, either waiting or get a less polished version. So those are the two choices that Microsoft has had to face. Neither one of them is good if you're a Windows Mobile fan. But that's a choice. So hopefully sometime in February or March we'll start seeing those updates. But at least hopefully that build that will come out will be a little bit more stable and reliable than the current version. Any word on the Microsoft Band 3? And will Band 1 get any more feature updates? Okay, so the Microsoft Band 2 has been on the market only for about three months right now. And already people are asking about the Microsoft Band 3. Fair enough. We don't have any information about that. It is presumably in development. I've heard things that they're going to be pursuing waterproofing for the next version. Probably also run Windows 10 IoT on there as well. No solid information. Uh, if their track history is right on though, we'll see something in October, November of this year for the new version. Don't hold me to that. It's a little too early for any rumors on this device. Now, regarding Band 1 and features, no, I don't believe they're going to get any more features. Uh, don't hold me to that. I don't have any internal information on that, but it looks like Microsoft is focusing on Band 2 right now. Band 1, though, is still supported, so whatever is there will continue to work, just as the Band 2. After all, they share a lot of the same operating system that is through the firmware. So I would expect continued support for Band 1, but probably no new features. What about a Surface 4? Is Microsoft just waiting for the Intel Goldmont chips? Okay, so there are no solid rumors on a Surface 4 right now, but the Surface 3 has been doing very well. In fact, Microsoft just announced some student deals with it, and they're selling it through enterprise and schools as well. So Surface 3 has basically been well-reviewed and well-liked, so I would definitely expect a Surface 4. As to when that will happen, Probably sometime in the spring towards summer, just like when the original Surface 3 came out. That came out just through a press release. There was no actual event for it, so I would not expect something big like in October. Instead, they'll just announce it, it'll be out, and it'll be in stores probably within a few weeks after that. But yeah, look towards the spring and summer, but right now, no solid information. As far as the Intel chipsets go, Maybe you'll see the next generation, but I'm not really sure of the roadmap with Intel and if those will be available at this time. However, the current generation of Skylake processors are very nice, and I'd like to sort of see those in the Surface 4, but we'll have to wait and see. How do you feel about Microsoft giving goodies to other platforms like Wordflow, Garage Apps, etc., while their own OS lacks much? So I actually don't mind this, and the reason is I think of Microsoft as a company having to deliver software and services wherever and whenever. So if you're a Windows Phone fan and only a Windows Phone fan, it will certainly bother you. However, they got to think about the larger picture, which is iOS is basically out there dominating, as well as Android, and they want those services on those devices. So I actually don't have a problem with it. Regarding Windows 10 Mobile and why it lags behind, I mean, you have to develop an operating system. And you can't just catch up overnight and make everything parody with, say, iOS and Android, which have been out for years at this time. They're definitely trying, but they had to start from scratch. Now, we can go back and say that they shouldn't have restarted the system so many times. I would agree with that. There has definitely been mistakes made, and Microsoft is trying to catch up, but that is what we are dealing with right now. Uh, don't forget, the people who make the iOS and Android apps for those devices 
are not the same people working on Windows 10 Mobile. Those are different teams. So you can't necessarily say that they're taking people away from Windows 10 Mobile development. I think they have people on that. After all, Windows 10 Mobile development is tied to Windows 10 development. It is the same team. So Microsoft is not sacrificing here. You have your Windows 10 team doing their thing and you have their iOS and Android team doing theirs. There's no reason to tell those iOS and Android developers that work for Microsoft, hey, hold back on creating awesome software. Instead, Microsoft's saying, go ahead and do that. Meanwhile, the Windows 10 team has to play catch up. It's a hard job, so we're gonna have to wait and see what they do, but that is the situation. I don't have a problem with it, but I can understand if you're a Windows Phone fan how you could basically be bugged, but that's the way it is. Why have Microsoft not been able to merge Skype into messaging in the way iMessage for Apple works? Or is this the plan? Okay, so that is the plan long-term for Microsoft, but don't forget Skype was a desktop system that they're trying to convert to mobile. That's no easy task. So they're definitely trying to do that, but there's a lot of hurdles. Now you could have argued that they maybe should have started and just built their own system from scratch as a mobile one, but Skype has a large base built in and what do you do with that? Do you just dump them or do you bring them into the future and make that system mobile? So they decided to keep that entire Skype base but make the system mobile but it's going to take some time. There's definitely a lot of hurdles. And right now, if you're using the messaging app, you can know that there's a lot of problems with it. But that is a long-term plan. So we'll see with Redstone coming this summer, whether or not they'll be able to improve upon it, but fingers crossed they will. Is it possible to install Windows Phone 8.1 using the recovery tool with a Lumia 950 XL or a Lumia 950? Okay, so first up, why would you want to install Windows Phone 8.1 onto a new Lumia 950? A lot of people actually want to do this because of stability or they just prefer the design and the feel of Windows Phone 8.1. I totally get that, but the short answer is no, you cannot do that. Uh, Microsoft never released images with Windows Phone 8.1 for the 950 XL or the 950, so you can't just roll back. The drivers aren't there, there's no way to do it. Now, I imagine some world someone could actually hack this on there, but I don't think there's anyone actively trying to do that. So no, you can't do it. Unfortunately, you have to live with Windows 10 Mobile. Is the Lumia 650 the last phone based on Nokia's designs, or is it a sign of things to come with the Surface phone? Okay, so I've argued in the past that the Lumia 650 is basically the last Lumia in development. Now, I don't know if that's gonna be forever. Are they retiring the name? I just do not know. All I know is right now, the 650 is the last device I've heard of that's coming out this year with the Lumia name. As far as the Surface phone, there's so little information on it right now, it's really hard to speculate. My guess though is it's gonna have its own design language, its own features, it'll be its own unique device, possibly with different branding as well, to really stand out from the herd and basically get rid of the Lumia baggage that has been associated with that phrase. So hopefully we'll see something in the next few months, but um, that seems to be the end for the Lumia line for now. We'll see what Microsoft does with it. They may keep it around for their budget devices in the future. So don't hold me to anything here. Like I said, information is kind of hard to find, but there you go. So that does it for this week's episode. Remember, if you have a question, use hashtag AskDanWindows on Twitter or use our email, AskDan at WindowsCentral.com, and maybe we'll pick yours. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.